Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the next most recent episode, or the current episode, however you wish to do it, timey-wimey stuff, of Star Trek Adventures The Expanse. This is the Halloween episode where the GM will attempt to get scary. Uh, spoiler alert, it won't be too scary, so, you know, well, I hope it won't be too scary. The players might leave, who knows, we'll find out. Uh, there will be some sound effects, so please keep your speakers sort of down until we get this hang of things, I don't know how well they'll translate into stream and i apologize in advance to everyone involved anyways that said let's go to the uh, uh the station log which i or the ship log which is going to be ensign moore science officers log start a 84793.9 the three months spent on board the concordia have been quite the adventure i'm still working on trying to establish myself into a social circle on the ship. Everyone is wonderful, and I'm enjoying the senior staff. However, being fresh out of the academy, a fresh out of the academy ensign, and then being uh, given a bridge position has ruffled some feathers of those who have been in Starfleet longer or are higher ranked than myself. Never nevertheless, we are here for our exploration, and that is something that there is no shortage of in this region of space or with this as crew. Uh, we are currently en route to DS-15, with the two dignitaries that we have been picked up for the station. Despite this, the captain has authorized a day of study on a small inversion nebula that is formed at the edge of Yalaxi space. These nebulas do not uh, form very often, and when they do, they don't last very long before the unstable plasma ignites. This particular nebula is in the late stages of decay. However, we are a we're able to preserve some of the plasma in a chronostasis field for future study in science lab four for the next time we have some time uh onward for some r and r at cerberus i think uh, i am thinking i'm going to be visiting the pet store on the boulevard i think a companion would be good for me and <laughs> long all right so the uss concordia is on the edge of the carceri nebula about to head in does anyone have anything they wish to do, say, scenes before that happens? Doesn't sound like it. Nope. Okay. Uh, so. <clears throat> Captain, if you would be so kind as to give the order. All right, Primrose, head in. Primrose does not respond. And it takes you a second to realize that Primrose isn't moving. On the bridge, as you uh, look around, uh, you realize that of the individuals on the bridge, you, uh, Commander Hadrix, Ferliza, Moore, Reinhardt, are all unaffected, but everyone else is stood stock still. Hmm. What is happening? Ensign Moore, can you? Oh no! And walking out from behind one of the pe one of the standing displays is a little girl. Uh, she appears no more than seven, uh, human, dressed in a Victorian green dress and or Victorian pink dress with pink hat. In one hand, she is holding a stuffed teddy bear close to her chest, and in the other hand is holding a fairly wispy parasol. Oh, hello. I'm sorry, you can't, you can't go in there right now. We Why can't is that, go young lady? In there? Yes. To the nebula? No, you, you can't go in there right now. Uh, you see, they're all going to be very much killed soon. and I, Papa doesn't want you to die yet. Is that your name? No. No. No, no. Oh, I will get up out of my chair and walk over towards her. Uh, she takes a couple steps backwards, but nothing overly uh, quick. I, I, I'll like, you know, you know, like not really bend knee, but at least kind of make myself small. And I was like, what is your name, young lady? I am Q. Pop. Pop. Um. <laughs> no, no, this is our Q episode on Halloween. No. 
Papa oh. does say that uh, humanity doesn't deserve to die in this fashion. And perhaps there's a way. Maybe this is how I can help. <gasps> oh, I can help Papa. Yes. Wait, if... wait. If, if I may, Captain. And can... I want to bring up a a mini hollow projection of the uh, John Delancey queue. Ah, yes. Oh, uh, you mean uh, this one? <gasps> that one. Yep. But, um, is that your Papa? Yes, yes, that is Papa. And at that point, you also hear for Lisa. Fuck. <laughs> Papa says that well, those words are bad. And she uh, snaps her fingers, and uh, for Lisa, you have lost the ability to speak. Uh, uh, I just kind of mouth, I'm sorry. <laughs> Young lady, what do you need us to do to help you? Well, Papa has always said how much he enjoys test making our humans think and s helping themselves, giving them just you know, uh, making them slightly smarter. So, I have an idea. Yes, we're going to play a game. If you can figure out how to prevent this, them from being killed, then you can go in. Yes, I think that's very good. And before you have even a chance to say anything against the sort, there is a flash. And you find yourselves on the very familiar Cerberus Station Operations Center. It is pitch black. Uh, only lights, uh, the only light that is coming in is a dull red bloody smear of color from the nebula coming in through the station's viewports up above. There is no power to the station. Uh, there's no sign of life. Uh, there is... Uh, most of the consoles have been torn apart, destroyed. Uh, the place is generally unkempt. Uh, looks like someone, looks like an angry mob has been through here at some point in the station's past. What equipment do we have? Uh, you are current. You have no weapons. You have no tricorders. You have your com badges. <laughs> I fall over. <laughs> oh. oh, that's the wrong cue. That would be this cue. I I, I attempt to speak again. Is my ability to speak still gone? No, you're back. As soon oh, as okay. uh, as soon as she sees Reinhardt fall over, uh, little girl Q blips over to him. Oh, I'm sorry. I hurt you. Uh, she taps you on the f uh, she taps you on the forehead, and your prosthetic leg reappears. Yep. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and yes. So um, so find out what happened. Yes, be 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 nice. Of course, there's what's a what's a bit of a game without a little bit of fun. She what giggles do you mean a bit. By fun? As there is a small roar. Oh, good. That emanates through the station. And with that, now I just want to confirm, oh, you guys are able to hear the sound effects. The station. Yep. Very oh lovely. yeah. And with that, excellent. Good. And then she will flash away. Leaving behind a haunted giggle. Moore's going to search through any of the consoles to see if we can find any, like, tricorders or equipment that yeah, look might for have equipment. been left. Look for equipment. Uh, Salvage. Can I hit... I want to hit, like, all station comms mm -hmm. and basically send out is anyone responding uh there uh there is no no one responds uh ensign moore if you could please roll a let's do a presence plus no uh let's do a insight plus con test for salvaging please uh difficulty of two so i'm not all familiar with all these magical space energies out there. I only got up to the giant Abraham Lincoln and the Apollo. What was that? <laughs> that 
was an entity known as Q. Um, like the letter. Yes. Yes, like just the like the letter. Um, Omnipotent, there, all powerful. Uh, there is a continuum of them. There are many. Well, Michael, I was going to give you a threat for a third die. I succeeded. You did indeed. <laughs> uh, sorry, carry on the conversation. So, we got Jared Abraham Lincoln. We have Apollo. And I think there was also some Trellium guy. Oh, what a giant cat? Uh, what have you guys found in the last 200 years? Like, honestly. A lot of things to try to kill us. A lot of things that we kind of wish we could have forgotten. Like the Q. Okay. So apparently we're being tested. Like, I, as I said, I, I've only caught up to the last hundred-ish years of contact. They just like to apparently test humanity, thinking that humanity couldn't be more... They're advanced humans, aren't they? Just messing around with their past selves. Uh, um, omnipotent beings of some sort. Omnipotent, mm. all-powerful, anything that you can think of, they can do. Anyway, let's not talk bad of them. <laughs> they sound like bored children. Not a bad analogy. Uh, okay, so, uh, Ensign Moore, during your scavenging and salvaging, um... You notice a couple things. One, there is a thin layer of dust on everything. Uh, so uh, so it's been a while since anyone's been here. Uh, there is... Uh, you find a tricorder, a standard one, not a science or, or engineering one, uh, heading underneath one of the uh, secure... Uh, one of the quick releases on one of the science consoles. Uh, the problem is that its power source has been drained. All right. So just the tricorder? Uh, just the tricorder, yes. Computer? I... Sir, I'm thinking there's nothing left. If you... There's such a layer of dust. There hasn't been anything in a while. And judging by this, I pull out the tricorder, and it's dead battery. It's been a while since anything's had power. Hedrix will hit his com badge to see if we've got at least communication between the five of us. Yes. Um, local communications are still intact. Not that I'm saying we should split up, but if we need to, at least we know we have comms right now. And uh, stay in teams. Can we... So there's no power, everything's off. No we... computer answered. Uh, no computer answered. Uh, life support is apparently just because it makes life a little easier for everyone involved. Life support is at least operational, if not running at bare minimum. So there is there is gravity, although it's a you know 0.2 G lighter than Earth. And there is oxygen, but it's very stale and very metallic. Hmm. Well, if memory serves, that's the captain's office up there, right? We can see what Rack. we can find on this deck, but we're also so far away from the rest of the station, we're going to have to drop down a good amount of decks. Right. Yeah, I would I'm going to start looking. Like to see, I like to see when we are. Yes. That's my first priority, because like, I'd like to know if we have how long this has been and how much time has passed. And sorry, what was that, Moose? Uh, I'm just going to head over to one of the uh, uh, temper lifts and open the doors. Sure. Manual override, just to peek in. Okay. Easy enough to do with any amount of strength, and you have it in spades. Uh, you open, uh, as the captain and Hadrix begin to ascend the stairs to the captain's office, uh, Moose pulls open the doors and looks down into a yawning chasm of darkness. No turbo lift at this level. And it doesn't look like one's coming. Mm. Moore's gonna tap for Lisa on the shoulder. Let's go look yeah. and see if there's anything in the conference room. Yes, um... We have too many options. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so the emerge. There's like the little ladder in the turbo lift, right? Ah, uh, yes. Me. Yeah. And then it connects down to a Jeffrey's tube at some point. Naturally. Hmm. Well, everyone's doing their own thing, and we were told to figure out what's happening. I wasn't told to stay still. Ooh, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, boy. So, so where it takes Reinhardt, you know, in minimal amount of effort to open this door, it probably takes more and I a good couple tries to get the door to the conference room open. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go to you guys in a second. We'll check on Hadrix and Bashir first, as you guys All right. are heading into... Just... Oh, sorry, Moose. I just wanted to confirm, was that sound within the uh, the turbo lift shaft, or was that from the other side of the room? Uh, that's coming from somewhere down lower decks. Okay, it's not above me. No, there's very little okay. above, or very little above in where you currently are. Good, good. I didn't want anything to squish me as I was going down this ladder. <laughs> Fair. Okay, so let's get into the captain's office. Okay, so, uh, Bashir and Hadrix, you guys make your way into the captain's office. Um, first things first, um, just because it makes life a bit easier, um, with, as you are, a, ah, as the door swings open, uh, you uh, reach for your wrists and discover that you weren't, ha you didn't have wrist-mounted flashlights before, Maybe you can thank the little girl Q for this one gift. As you, as your uh, lights begin to uh, pierce the, <clears throat> sorry, as your lights pierce the darkness of the captain's office, uh, you see a fairly similar scene to what's outside. Um, everything of any value is gone. Anything of no value is also gone. The replicator has been smashed. Uh, pieces inside of it have been torn out. The captain's chair is, oddly enough, still there, although it's covered in a thin layer of dust. The computer panel is still intact, but there's no power to it, uh, probably because it is actually integrated into the desk and no one wanted to actually carry the damn thing out. Uh, the plants are... are yeah, The plants are also mysteriously gone. They weren't yanked out. Um, there would be, you know, evidence of that, nor are they dead husks of what they were. They're just They're gone. gone. Yes. Hmm. Well. Quite ransacked around here. Definitely. Did you know Crafton Crawford at all? No, not really. I mean, heard of him, but I didn't have actually have a chance to meet up, um, meet my, meet him exactly. Uh, I didn't, I met him a couple times. I, like, sit down in his chair and kind of start going through drawers. Um, basically, if there's anything laying around or, you know, like a journal or pad that I can say around, anything like that. Well, you're actually kind of in luck for this one. Uh, because of the captain's uh, theater background, uh, he tended to keep a lot of uh, handwritten notes um, and... Stuff that just, you know, couldn't, you know, stuff. He didn't, while he liked pads for day-to-day -day stuff, his curiosity was more the old-fashioned stuff. So old scripts, pen, paper, that sort of thing. And you happen to find a uh, a ledger of some, or a day planner. Let's call it a day planner. Uh, which would have been, oops, sorry. Pull Ships my... of the line calendar. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You take one. Yeah, you take a look at Ships of the Line and go, wow, they are so so reaching with the starships of the line for the thirtieth for the thirtieth millennium. Anyway. <laughs> uh, let's get my notes up here because I have them, I promise. So uh, what he has is Star date uh, eight eight four seven three point zero. Breakfast. Uh, check out recent. Uh, check out recent important or imported plays. Uh, standard communicate with Riker. Once again, attempt to get pizza recipe from him. You can see a big frowny face after that. 
apparently Captain Crawford had failed. Um, senior, our senior staff meeting, uh, USS Layden coming back. Good. It would be good. A uh, quick note saying that it would be nice to see uh, Commander Dalrym again. The only the other thing of interest would be that their uh, first con or contact with the Prost so. Not entirely sure what Prost so is. That's all that seems to be written down. F uh, flipping the pages after that are blank, and before that are just more day to day station stuff. Okay, how long ago time wise was that? Uh, good question. You're not entirely. Sh so, uh, time, at least as far as you're concerned, well, the frame of reference for the Concordia is that would have been this morning. Oh, okay. Hmm. hmm okay. That's kind of interesting that it was. It is. Today. Can't be today. I mean. Either we've been yeah. thrown into the future, or, I don't know, alternate reality? Either way. Either way. Anything's possible with the queue. Speaking of anything's possible, let's go to the conference lounge. Where oh, we... I miss this conference lounge. <laughs> it is a good conference lounge. I truly enjoy it. Ah, I have just buggered everything up. Uh, let's We're check. on the upper level. Yes, you are. There. That's right. That's good. Okay. No, everything's still buggered up. Um, hang on. I buggered up the east overlay. That looks right. Crossing fingers. Okay. Now that we are on the upper lounge, we will see both uh, Ferliza and Moore entering. It takes a few seconds to open the door, but you come, you open the, uh, you open the door, and you set foot. Uh, there is actually a significant degree of dust in this uh, room, far more dust than was pr in previous rooms, or in the ops, I should say, anyways. What is very interesting is that this conference room is currently decked out for some sort of gala. Uh, looking down below, you can see that the podium has several um, golden ornamentations set up. Uh, there is a large amount of chairs, the traditional red carpet, all coated in dust. Hmm. Something must have happened quickly for everything to be both this prim and proper and yet have this layer of filth on it? Yeah. It's possible, but... Well, there's I... no sign of, like, a struggle or a panic. Is everything still in pristine, pristine mm -hmm. shape? Oh, sorry, I should mention... I forgot to mention that, yeah, there, there are definitely signs that this place has been ransacked at some point. Um, but... A lot of the ornamentations are knocked over. Uh, the tables and chairs are are uplifted, and anything of value is gone. Uh, any organic material is gone as well. But hmm. guess the real question is, who or what came through here? And who or what are we dealing with? Question that... I hope we can find the answer to. Um, if we could find a power source, we could try to get this tricorder up and running. But I would prefer not to sacrifice one of our cob badges for that. I mean, if we're sticking in teams, we can afford to lose one of them, can't we? The question is, how long will the battery in our com badge power a tricorder? Hmm. If we had Commander Reinhardt here, we might be able to figure that out, but we don't. So, 
Hmm. Although, that does give me an idea. A station like this is powered by uh, both the warp core, but also has several fusion reactors. There's probably leftover radioactive material down there. Could be the case, but if there's radioactive material, we might need... Radiation suits, yes. And assuming that's something that the entity or entities we are dealing with is all is valuable, we probably don't have those. Unless they overlook it as primitive technology. That's true. And if any one of us is going to be able to restart a fusion reactor, it'd be Reinhardt. Yes, so... Are we joining him and going down the turbo lift shaft? I think we should reconvene with the entire team before we make any sudden moves. Agreed. Tee hee. <laughs> okay. So, back in ops. Now, I believe that, Reinhardt, you are... Are you currently descending the ladder? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of all the times... But at what speed? <laughs> of all the times for me not to uh, bring in the uh, turbo lift uh, prop, but that's okay. Just imagine <laughs> a long, narrow ladder. Yeah, I'm looking for the first Jeffrey tube that can access. Okay. Uh, first Jeffrey tube access isn't far down. Uh, you, The ops are currently on deck one. Uh, Jeffrey's tube access is on deck three. I will make my way down. Okay. As you, oh, that's a sound. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, the rest of you hear the sound of a turbo lift disengaging from itself and falling down the shaft. Thankfully, it's not M Moose's shaft. Uh, and it... I was just looking around my apartment like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it goes down for a little while until you hear a crash at the bottom that vibrates ever so slightly. Uh, Moose, you... Can you please draw me a daring plus um, daring plus engineering test, please? And At the you... sound of that, I'm coming running into ops to figure out what is happening. Yeah. Um, do you have plus... any focus for this? Um, if you have, um, f... let's use your Mako training. Okay. Uh, this will be a difficulty of one. Well, <laughs> that's uh, four successes, so three momentum. Cool. Uh, you, uh, using your uh, handy dandy tool belt. Oh wait, you weren't. You didn't get a tool belt. Uh, nope. Yep. Just you, got my leg back. <laughs> yeah. You just got your leg back. You grab the uh, Jeffrey's tube and heave it open, just to, and you pull back just to dodge a pair of glowing eyes on a body the size of a, a medium-sized dog. Uh, snarl at you, pounce at you, miss you, grab onto the far edge of the turbo lift shaft, attempt to gain purchase, and basically act like a cat trying to climb a glass door as it slides down. No, no, no. Bye, Fido. <laughs> Did he have a, does he have a, a wrist light, too? Ah, uh, yes. Did everybody get those? Everyone okay. gets those. That was just checking. I'm, I'm just gonna crawl into Jeffrey's tube. <laughs> mm -hmm. just, just, just move on. <laughs> that thing is already taking care of itself for me. All right, and so the four of you, still in ops, reconvene. What did you guys find? Not a whole lot. The conference room was set up for a gala. It, I mean, the place has been ransacked, but other than that layer of dust and nothing's been really touched. Hmm. 
not much going on in the captain's office either. I mean, most of the things were gone with a few little inaccuracies, but the captain found something interesting. I found a, a planner from Crawford that this all happened today, apparently. The same start date on his calendar as it is on the Concordia. Or at least that was the last recorded day that happened here. I have... Uh, okay. Like, alright, I know how you're saying about, like, dust is covering everything. Ours... Is the dust... In specific places, more so than others? Um, not really. Uh, it's, okay. a, it's a fairly even uh, coating. Naturally, there are areas that are slightly thicker than others, such as um, corners underneath the stairwells, places that just weren't treaded all that heavily. Okay. Uh, but things like the consoles and the, the railings, where individuals have tracked that's fairly uniform and it's at this point that you guys hear a bass melody whether or not it's good or not i'll leave up to your imagination sort of reverberating as well as a small tapping sound in time with the uh singing it's emanating from the turbo lift shaft um commander Yes. Is that you? Certainly not me. Moose? Um, yes. Is I'm that assuming you? Communication is working. Yeah, communication is yeah. working. Oh, uh, yeah. It's me. Unless you know any poltergeist or monster that could sing Dolly Parton. <laughs> Who's Dolly? You know what? Never mind. What can yeah. I say? I like the classicals. Uh, uh, classicals? Okay. Not going there. <laughs> Reinhardt, your uh, attention is immediately shifted uh, as you come around a bend in the Jeffries tubes, heading down to deck four. Uh, at the very far end, approximately... 50 meters, well, now let's say 25 meters, uh, you see another pair of those red eyes glowing out from the darkness. Alright. I'm going to keep trucking on. Alright. Heading towards them? Yep. Okay. Do you happen to take a look at them? Because you, you have a flashlight in your hand. Are you trying to illuminate them? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. I'll try and see what it is. What you see is a teddy bear with teeth. I'm about to talk to the chief engineer of this station. <laughs> they got some weird stuff in the Jeffrey's TV here. Um, what kind of weird things? I'm looking at a teddy ruxpin with teeth. Ah. <laughs> Did it just make up sound? Yes, it did. Like, oh. Apparently, it's audible. I wish Bud was here. <laughs> it begins to scamper towards you. Oh, Christ. Okay. Um, yeah, Moose isn't going to be afraid of it. He's, he's a Mako. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh, this is going to be a dare, an opposed daring uh, security test as it attempts to melee you in a Jeffrey's tube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, I'm using a momentum for an extra dice. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. I actually have its stats. Uh, I should probably roll its stats uh, instead of just d20s because that seems more fair. Uh, 
One success. <laughs> Murder versus... bears. And so you need to have one or more successes to pass, and you get six. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> wow! I am not really good after this. This is it. I've touched out on my luck. I am done. <laughs> And and then after this, Reinhardt dies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is how I die. This is okay. how the world ends. This is how the world ends. <laughs> not not like this. So you're now maxed out on momentum, I believe. Um, so you take yeah. control of melee. Well, here's five challenge dice. Uh, with me and right hook. Mm -hmm. uh, since we are we overflowing momentum, actually. Um, you had two, and you got yeah. six. So, uh, five successes, or five momentum, so yeah, you have ones floating. I will take that one floating just to re-roll that zero for the giggles. Shiggles. No, okay. <laughs> uh, oh my god, man. That's seven stress to that poor little yeah. thing. Uh, so it attempts to gnash, gnash at you with, uh, you know, teddy bear-sized teeth. And despite them looking sharp, you go, uh-uh. You grab it by the snout and basically just rip it rip the head from its body. Um, you're expecting to be covered in, you know, gore, ichor, you know, that sort of icky things, but instead you're covered in um, fluff. But is the head still intact? The head is still intact, but... Oh, I got a souvenir. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's a trophy, guys. I killed a teddy bear. <laughs> A one, two twos, and two threes, man. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's his luck for the night. And then everything's just downhill from here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I'm still singing as I'm fighting this thing. <laughs> Is it still the same song? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Love it. Uh, no, he's moved into Jolene now. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll switch it to Willie Nelson on the road again. Uh, okay, uh, so Moose is busy uh, doing pulling carnage in uh, Jeffrey's tubes. What do the rest of you guys do? That's a good question. Well, considering this upper deck seems like it's pretty desolated, we might want to head down lower. If I remember these deep space stations, most of them have some kind of um, communal area. I know there was a here on this station, so we're to find anyone or anything. There's probably our best bet. End of memory sabs. It's, uh, memory it's, uh, med lab is there too, yes. or near it. Let's hope there's something there. Okay. And if not, we'll just let Moose destroy it. <laughs> okay. So, how are you guys going to get down there? The direct way, or are you going to do a roundabout way? Are you going to attempt to bungee jump? Because that'd be fun. I say we Could repel we down. Repel down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No bungee. Great minds think alike, my friend. Great minds think alike. I've been thinking about repelling down the 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 turbo lift since we came in here. <laughs> okay. Uh, then those of you setting up a repel rig, uh, please roll me a control plus engineering with a difficulty of three. Uh, because you're kind of using scavenge materials here, and Ooh, if, anything like fun thing, yeah, like structural, <laughs> like if you have the jury rig talent or the jury rig focus. What a, what about improvisation as a focus? Reverse engineering as a focus. I'll let reverse engineering work in this case. Um, I'm improvisation uh, is similar to jury rigging. <laughs> uh, that's more of a theater thing. I'm think I've interpreted that, or do we? I guess I meant that is a focus from a medical slash engineering standpoint, I guess. What's your engineering score? My engineering's a one, so it's not really going to matter anyway. Okay, I'll let you have it. Okay. Hey! 
All right, so what are we rolling? Uh, control engineering. And one of you will assist with control engineering. This will be a difficulty three. I'll take the lead because I have a three in engineering and I have a focus. I shall, uh, I shall assist. All right, while they're doing that, Moose, is there any particular destination that you have in mind? I'm using them um, Well, okay. first I want to go through these tubes looking at any EPS relays and junctions um, to see if any of them still hold a charge. Ah, okay. Uh, insight engineering for me, please. Difficulty of two. Hey, we got the three we needed. All right. Uh, team Ops Engineering gets the three that they need. Uh, it's basic. It won't hold your weight for long, but it'll hold it for long enough. Bah. Ah. <laughs> okay, so uh, Moose, as you continue to crawl through the path uh, pathways, separating yourself further and further from the group, uh, you're noticing, or you're not able to find any sufficient charge in any of the EPS relays. And in fact, the further you get, or sorry, the closer you get to the more heavily or the easier accessed areas, such as junction points, uh, access corridors, that sort of thing, uh, many of them have actually been physically removed. Okay. Sometime I'm going to look for, I'm going to start looking for a hatch to get me out on whatever deck I'm on. All right. Uh, do me a favor, roll me 1d10 plus 3. You find yourself on deck 10. Ooh, I've been traveling for a while. Yeah. Or you've just found a direct route down, one way or the other. Uh, let's see. Yeah. If I had my uh, uh, floor plan open, I could tell you what is on deck 10, but that involves me digging through some documents, and I don't have time for that at the moment. <laughs> Anyways. I imagine I left my communicator open, so everyone's been hearing me sing. <laughs> different songs probably it's it's made the rappel down much more cheerful <laughs> at some point I'm, i start yodeling <laughs> and i'm gonna stop and be like did you know romulans have no idea what a yodeling is confused the hell out of them back on chiron interesting uh, so uh deck 10 is internal docking and dry dock facilities the repair oh. it's part of the the uh, inner the docking bay docking section the guts yes all right uh then we'll get to what moose sees in a little bit as you guys make your way down to the boulevard at first it is a fairly simple and or a fairly similar site anything that was organic is long gone not just decayed gone a thin layer of dust is on everything there is a small flicker of blue light emanating from the eclipse um, the doors to security center have been appear to have once been barred but show signs of being uh, literally forced open uh, similar to sick bay or the infirmary uh, they were barred at some point but were now uh, forced open and part of the door has been disintegrated uh, you also see several glowing eyes poking out at you from various uh, crevices under the decks or uh, not under the decks under the benches inside a uh, long abandoned door frames and one little bastard peeking its head out, oh. uh, head out where one of those trees were <laughs> and quick question actually were the doors broken inward or outward Ah, broken inward. Good question. As the bears begin to charge. Oh, good. Oh, crap. Do we still have, like, the rope that, like, the harness from repelling? Uh, yes, your makeshift uh, rope harnesses are still there. I should mention that the bears are only approximately three feet tall and extremely fuzzy. <laughs> the only thing that appears to be dangerous is their teeth. As one approaches, I want to swing my heart, the uh, like clip on my harness to knock one. Okay, uh, let's just run this in initiative then. Uh, and turn. Jesus. Oh God, it's been a while. I still have the initiative from previous. It's been a while. So 
I am good GM, apparently. Yeah, it's all good, man. Yeah. You know, if uh, Moose starts ever singing uh, Nickelback, I'm this game's done. <laughs> okay, uh, so, Ensign Moore, you sound like you're doing something first. Have at it. So, makeshift, like, use the uh, clip from repelling as, like, smack it upside the face. Sure. Uh, roll me a daring plus security. And it will be opposed by its daring security. Let's see. So, it's daring. Could I sway you for a focus in reverse engineering? Because I'm not using it for its intended purposes. No. <laughs> well, congratulations. You only need one success to win. You have that one success. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Roll me challenge dice equal to one plus your security, which will be three. Four. Four. Yeah. Hey! Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> nice. Uh, so your hook catches along its uh, one of its or its back seam, and as you and it turns from being a um, what? And it turns from being a simple uh, hook whip uh, to a bowl, you know, a one-sided bola that you begin twisting around and flinging in directions causing the back seam to open up and all of its stuffing flies out and it dies. <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> More just turned into a badass. <laughs> so many demonic teddy bears. What is happening? <laughs> uh, this de uh, Speaking of demonic teddy bears, this one is going to attempt to attack Commander, Han Commander Hadrick's. Uh, so Hadrix, you know, opposed daring plus security, or, or yeah, daring security, please. <laughs> well, uh, you only need actually if you get zero, if you can, you know, if you get straight zeros, that's even enough. So as long as you don't complicate, well, there's one success. There we go. <laughs> uh, roll damage, please. And because you get a complication, add two challenge dice. Ooh. So one plus security plus two. Yes. So six. <clears throat> Ooh, guys, I'm okay. going to use a momentum to... I yeah, need to go word ahead. If you didn't. Well, that's nice. a little better. Yeah. Um, Commander Hadrix, you punch it. it uh, you punch it straight in the stomach. Uh, the teddy bear flies back. The teeth stay... You know, it's it suffers like a cartoonish-style death as it flies back, mouth agape, and it leaves the teeth in midair chattering for a second before falling down and on the ground. <laughs> Okay, uh, that's my turn. Who wants to go next? That's that's a good question. Um, yeah, these things seem a little aggressive, y'all. A little bit. You're all are fighting them while Reinhardt yodeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's make our way to security. Agreed. I like maybe how you're just. Find... Sorry, go ahead. I I was just to say maybe we can find some weapons. Okay, uh, so you're not going to attack the uh, cute teddy bears with murderous intent. <laughs> no, well, not I'm... animals. <laughs> to say we're backing up, adding to security. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that is going to be the captain's turn. Is heading into a different zone, which would be security. <clears throat> Next up is one of mine. This one is going to lunge at Moore. Moore, opposed uh, daring security, please. Well, you need... Actually, you need Just zero... Su 
Actually, he's defending, so he only needed zero. Oh, yeah, that's right. Congratulations, you have beat it. Uh, roll me your whip damage, I guess. That's four again. Four damage. Nice. Not willing to... Uh, not willing to let just one... Ah, not willing to let the badassery stop, you uh, turn it into a... You fashion a quick loop and snare this thing out of the air. Uh, you uh, slam it to the ground where it dis and as soon as its uh, eyes or as soon as the back of its head smashes against the bench where it landed the glowing eyes fade away that's my turn uh hadrix or for lisa i believe are left yeah um i'm suggesting dr ensign follow the captain into security i'll keep back you guys up I I've moved, so just I can't. to start heading towards the door, and in case one of the bears comes after him, um, I am going to do the guard task. Oh, and what does that do? I don't actually think I've you seen that um, in combat before. It's a task with difficulty of zero. Um, it doesn't. Wait, hold on. Does it say? It does not say attribute and discipline for some reason. Oh, well, that's uh, handy. And success, um, I would success, assume it's the daring security, I would think. Or maybe fitness security, even though it doesn't say. Sure. Um, let's use, well, if you're guarding, let's use insight security instead. Insight security. Okay, that works. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll focus. Still, that's two successes, so you're back to six momentum. So what that does, let me look at this again. Um, any attacks, um, let's see, and success increases the difficulty of any attacks made against the character by plus one. Oh. Plus start of that character's next turn. Um, gotcha. Handy. Okay, so really just the difficulty uh, of... A bear that attacks me increases by plus one until the end of my next turn. Cool. Well, that's actually, actually... Do... well, wait, you rolled two, right? I think it just says success means you get a plus one. It doesn't say, like, you get plus one per success. At least that's how I'm reading Yeah, I'll, I'll take that interpretation. If it said number of successes is increase the number of difficulty... Yeah, yeah. It says, uh, gotcha. yeah, this is a task with difficulty zero, and success increases the difficulty of any attacks made against the character by plus one. So, okay. yeah. All right, so more backs away in there. Commander Hadrix, you have another bear coming at you. Let her rip. Quite possibly literally. <laughs> Maybe one day these ones will actually hit something. Ooh, two successes. Holy shit. Why'd uh, you say you need a, you need two successes or more to fend this one off. Would you like mm. some momentum? Remember, yeah, we're I, out, shall, my I man. shall use some momentum. I'll use one momentum for a third die. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, there's the three successes you need. Uh, so. Uh, uh, yeah, three successes. So uh, you take command of the uh, attack. So roll some challenge dice. One plus security. So I think that's four for you. You would be correct. Yeah, okay. Uh, so that is enough to take one of these guys down, too. This one doesn't go away with as much uh, flair or finesse as the last one. A uh, yeah, quick bat with one of your hands sends it flying off over the edge where it flails and lands with a soft plop. Quick question now, since I defended, I beat it by one, or actually I only needed two, so don't we get the one momentum That's back? That's right, you do. I miscounted my, I misremembered my math. No, we're good. Just double checking. And I'm you know, increasing my skills. <laughs> nice. Okay, uh, Hadrix, you're the last one to go. Uh, 
Hmm. No, I don't want to attempt it. I'm I'm a defender, not an attacker, so I will <laughs> actually do the guard ability as well. Okay. Hey. You're maxed out on momentum, so and if it's a difficulty zero, I'm just going to let it pass. No, actually, what I'm going to do is the other part of that ability is I can confer it on an ally, so oh. I would rather try to guard more. So it's ah. now a difficulty one task. Oh, interesting. Cool. I apparently need to read up on the guard task. That sounds amazing. I've not. I've been doing melee combat poorly this whole time. Say, Luffy. I mean, to be fair, tonight is the first time I've used the guard task in three years of playing Star Trek Adventures. Fair. So. Either way, uh, Hadrix, you take care. All right, you are now standing next to uh, Ensign Moore with, you know, a Talaxian Kung Fu style pose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wish it. No, it's hey, a wow. Talaxian um, uh, Tai Chi. Ah, yes, of course, that's right. You're you're the Tai Chi guy. Okay. So we... it, it increases. Um, so the benefit is given to him until the start of um, Moore's next turn. Okay. Cool. Uh, I have two murder bears left. One is going to go against Hadrix. The other one's going to go against Moore. So first one against Hadrix is. I wanted to go first. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll go against Moore. Only because I want to. When I defend, if I succeed, I want it to work that I throw the bear into the other one. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, you need uh, so. Basically, I'm attacking with one. You already have one free, so you basically can't fail this, but let's see how much you succeed by. I'm going to use the momentum for a third die, just <laughs> for extra measure. Okay, please do. Okay. That's uh, four successes in total. Uh, so you have three floating momentum. Well, I used the momentum, so we get one back. Mm -hmm. Back and okay, so I'm gonna use two to create the advantage that when I snare the one, I throw it into the other and knock it out as well. Okay, so basically applying the area attack to a melee strike. Cool. <laughs> because because I have a focus in physics and I'm dang it, I'm gonna use it. <laughs> Go for it, man. Bear Go one into bear two into, into a pool ball. <laughs> okay. So um, with my last floating momentum, because you said I had three mode of floating momentum, right? That's right. With my last floating, I'm going to re-roll that one zero. Okay. Oh, why did I just do that? I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Not that button. This button. Well, that's uh, five <laughs> points of damage. <laughs> I mean, more of that harness is... More of that hard... Uh, one has to question what you did during your time at uh, Starfleet Academy when you weren't busy studying, but dang nation, you've got this role play down pat. <laughs> Just no. <clears throat> Actually, Hadrix will look at the ensign and say, Son, you might have to teach me a few tricks there. Anytime, Commander. Anytime. <laughs> and we all enter the security office. Where the captain and uh, Ferliza have both been watching Moore with a bit of awe. Uh, Aww. I'm just, I'm like, Aww. I'm just like, a, <laughs> I'm just staring in awe at the carnage that is just a bunch of be of stuffed bear fluff just all over the boulevard, and I'm like, what is happening? What is happening? There are stuffed bears attacking us. What is happening? Okay. <laughs> There's the no. flash as you turn around and sitting, or sitting on the desk, or sitting on the desk with her feet dangling oh so cutely, is little Q. That wasn't very nice. You broke my toys. I like those toys. Well, your toys tried to kill us. Hmm. Well, yes. That's what they. That's what I asked them to do. I have and to make this fun somehow. All we did was to defend ourselves against your toys. Hmm. Yes, yes. Well, I just need new toys, apparently. And she, there's a flash. <laughs> well, 
that reverberates through the station. Bye. And with that, she flashes away. Okay, so we really need to find weapons, like now. I hate the Q continuum. And on those words, we're going to cut over to Moose, who is busy on deck 10. Uh, let's see, do I have any good... I don't. We never really spent much time in the docking ring, so I don't really have many good set pieces for it. So let's just uh, move you... Let's just move you to the boulevard and just let's put those over there. I was going to say, you could always throw them into a cargo bay. Yeah, that would mean that I'd have um, imported the cargo bay set pieces. Do you know how many point. set pieces there are on Cerberus Station? There's like 30 of them. I don't want to uh, deal with all of them at once. Good point. <laughs> Moose, uh, as your yodeling, uh, completely ignoring the sounds of brief... Uh, fighting coming from down below or coming through your comms <clears throat> uh, what sort of stuff are you looking <coughs> for in this neck of the woods uh, you are in the docking bay where many of the uh, reconstruct or many of the uh, ship maintenance uh, facilities would be yeah I'm looking for again power supply all right um, anything with um, a functioning console sure uh, inside engineering and this will be difficulty one. And if you have power systems as a focus, that would be a good one to have. Oh, I do. I do have EPS. <clears throat> well, uh -huh. uh, you're now... You have, like, uh, two floating momentum right now, so use that as you see fit shortly. Uh, as you walk your way through... I have an idea for the two. Okay. You want to make an advantage. Okay, what's the advantage? My yodeling has brought stuff towards me. <laughs> okay. 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 Alrighty then. <laughs> so, uh, as you continue to do your yodeling, uh, you make your way down to one of the areas marked... Uh, what's the phrase? Uh, yeah, marked industrial replicators. Uh, starship grade. Uh, authorized engineers only beyond this point. Uh, apparently, there were n no authorized engineers present when whoever decided to literally vaporize half the door and uh, kick aside a few other things, or kick aside the remnants. And uh, you know, you find a few interesting things. One, in the replic large replicator bay, there is a single console. Hmm. Actually, no, let's make this slightly more interesting for you. Uh, you find several dead bodies. Uh, they appear to be... Well, you may not recognize them, but... Or their spe... Well, actually, you know their species. Sorry, I'm rambling. Uh, they <laughs> are those of Draven species. Uh, now, you, you may... Re uh, you, I don't know how much time you may have spent with the uh, uh, crewman Void Runner, but there are several of his people. They appear to have been in a firefight. Uh, you find several discarded disruptor pistols uh, with power packs they actually seem to be they seem to hold a charge oh good 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 um does he have armor on um now you've already spent your two momentum for an advantage so unless you want to give me more spend more from another advantage you don't find any usable armor okay i will is say, the I, industrial replicator have power uh, the industrial replicator does not have power. No, um, the smaller replic there's a small replicator on one side that seems to have enough charge for maybe two uh, single or two small items, or one slightly larger one. And how many power packs did I find with the uh, disruptors? Uh, let's find out here. You will find. Yeah, you find a grand total of three power packs perfect um i'm going to take one power pack mm -hmm. hook it up to the replicator and i'm going to replicate myself some armor okay fantastic <clears throat> the it doesn't last long uh the power pack lasts long enough to give you a set of body armor and Damn, you're, going to, you're going to need it 
because as you turn around, there are several of those murder bears. However, big old grin. As you turn around and look at them, they begin to um, scamper <laughs> their way towards you. Is probably the best way to do it. Sort of oblongish, like they're using their arms for momentum as well, like gorillas. Uh, as they get close to you and you draw a bead on them, the cue flash happens and they disappear. And then there's that hiss somewhere in the station. Mm. And it goes silent. I'm assuming everyone else is still alive. So oh. far, so good, Boose. Okay. Well, where are you guys at? Promenade. Level yeah. 70? Oh. Well, that's a problem. I'm on deck 10. Ensign Moore had a good idea about rappelling down. It seemed to work for us. It then also we works as a makeshift pilot. weapon. Thank you, Ensign. Moose, you hear this. Seems I got myself a guest on deck 10. You guys fine down there? We're in security currently. Looking for weapons. Well, I got a couple on me right now. Draven Disruptors. I'll meet up with the so as soon as you can. Yeah, I might have a friend or two. Mm. Watch your six. I was going to make myself some slippers out of those teddy bears. <laughs> well, slipper. <laughs> By the way, Moose, you still have the head. <laughs> Is it? It, it did still not... doing things? No, it's long dead. No, okay. But you know, okay. you still have the head because I think it's hilarious. I have I have a tie under my belt. It's like a good luck charm. Uh, so while Moose continues to do stuff up there, oh, I should ask Moose: Is there anything else you wish to do up? In that neck of the woods? Um, if there's any power left, engineering replicator, uh, tricorder, bleh. Okay. Uh, you have a fully functioning engineering tricorder, and that will be the last of the power packs. Excellent. Power, sorry, power of the replicator? Yeah, power or of the, the replicator. All the power pack. Okay, okay. Uh, you use one power pack to give yourself the body armor. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the charges to give yourself a... Engineering tricorder. Sorry, so you have two power packs and one small item left. Oh, I, I still have something I can grab from it then? If you, yeah. Uh, let's see here. What is... If you want to take a second, I can jump back to the other folks and... Uh, what's the, what's the uh, MacGuffin tool they use on everything? It's the hyperspanner, isn't it? Uh, hyperspanner, multi-tool, something like that, yeah. Yeah, I'll just do a hyperspanner. Sure. <laughs> okay, you have the 24th century equivalent of a sonic screwdriver. <laughs> Actually, that's called a sonic driver. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> Anyways, back in the security office. Uh, we have you guys. It is still pitch black except for where your stab lights pierce. As you... um walk as you uh, silently move your way through there is indeed several layers of dust uh, you make your way habitually to the armory uh, to find that the armory's doors have been destroyed like exploded great and there is no weapons inside the armory So, I'm going to start meandering through uh, 
I'm gonna go over to the gym and see if there's any equipment left over there. Ah. I was gonna say, can we scavenge anything and make weapons? No. What sort of weapons are you looking for? Keep in mind, you have six momentum, which could be used to create advantages. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ensign Moore, inside the weight room, uh, you find several uh, several workout ah, several weights and weight machines are still in are still present. Their workout weights are still also present, although the machines are covered in thin layer of dust, rusted up, etc. Appears that a decent amount of time has passed since anyone last used them. Uh, oddly enough, in the corner, um, there is a single weight with a large note written by a heavy hand that says, Former property of Master Chief Ember. Do not try to lift. Signed, Lieutenant Commander Demos. I'm going to attempt to lift it. Yeah, no, you can't. It is, at, at normal at normal gravity, it is roughly uh, 250 pounds. And there. I don't care how good of a roll you make, you are a scrawny ensign. <laughs> yep. Captain, Commander, the weight room seems to be still pretty much intact. The weights are in here. Are the bungee cords for the sparring arena still there? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I will say yes, they are. I have ideas for weapons. Moose hairs off in the distance, weights attempting to be lifted. His muscles call to him. <laughs> him. <laughs> is, uh, so are, is there like free weights in here, I'm assuming? Yeah, there's uh, dumbbell style weights and uh, circular, uh, I don't know, actually, maybe free weights is the way to go. Those, you know, just the metal discs waiting to be inserted on the lifting. Right. Board. Yep, there's um, a good amount of those. I would like to just grab one of the uh, one of the actual bars that you put the weights on because okay. those things are pretty freaking hefty. So okay, aren't they like twenty pounds? Just about, yeah. Yeah, they're. I mean, you know, they're. About, so you know. Yeah. Uh, so give yourself a uh, basic melee weapon. Um, yeah. I wouldn't call it a blade per se, but we'll. We'll say that it deals non-lethal da non-lethal damage. Beautiful. And deals a base damage of two challenge dice. Alrighty, I'm and down. Are, I will say that there are three of those. I'll let the captain and the commander have the other two. I'm going to unhook the bungee cord, and I'll be using that since it's been going so well so, thus far. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, that is a one challenge dice, and that has the knockdown property. Non-lethal. Non-lethal damage with the knockdown property. Basically, it's like an unarmed attack. But uh, what it, what I will allow it to do is um, it has a reach. So it will it can attack an enemy that is not, you know, in your one, one adjacent, quote-unquote, zone. So it has reach. Awesome. Yeah. So basically what I'll say is if you attack with that and miss, uh, the opponent is unable to... Uh, regain or unable to gain advantage, gain the ability to attack you. I have no idea how that would be worded, but we'll call it that. Is there any parts and pieces left of like repair things from the exosuits? Oh, the exosuits. Well, that's a good question. As something begins I... to wander its way through the vents down to... Actually, no, this is just the station creaking. <laughs> uh, let's see, so the uh, exosuits. Oh, like, like Demos and whatnot? Yes. Ah. That uh, head into the, the security office is where he may have been, but that would be Romian Insight plus... I guess security, uh, with a difficulty of one. <clears throat> uh, 
And if you have something along the lines of pattern recognition or search techniques or something like that, that would Temporal work. mechanics. No. <laughs> no. What are you and talking Orion. about? I think that can, that can totally apply here. What are you talking about? Archaeology? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Lord. Okay, uh, t I'm going to let that succeed. No! I'm going to let that succeed at cost. At cost, okay. Because it is very. I was going to say, I, I was going to hope to make an advantage to like we could scrap together parts and pieces of his repair kit and of like his repair kits mm -hmm. and like make makeshift armor for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, Demos did most of his work in a separate lab, not the uh, security okay. office. Uh, but what you find is. Uh, what you find when you enter Demos' security office um, is, uh, sorry, I just have to figure out how to best to say this um, because he wouldn't be there. Where would he have been? Yeah. So uh, as you wander into uh, Demos' security office, uh, you head through the mess hall, uh, the section uh, up here, and are very ah, very curious to see how it has been turned into a makeshift fort. Uh, all the tables have been turned uh, up-ended and pressed against the doorway. Uh, you, with nothing bracing them, you move aside, or you uh, are able to push them aside with relative ease. Uh, however, the other side of the mess hall is not so easily dislodged, primarily because the table is being propped up by a leg made of what you assumed to be at first, or ah, what you assumed at first was a Demos replacement part. Yeah. But considering how it's a t considering how it's been broken off and all that stuff, you assume that it might be what's left of Mr. Demos. Oh. <gasps> Okay. Uh, I think I found the chief of security. Alive? <sighs> He's got a leg up on things. You managed to dislodge, or you pulled the leg aside and... It on its own weighs at least 50 pounds, but you're able to drag it off to the side, carving a line in the dust. Uh, what, what is interest? As you uh, begin to look closer around here, uh, you notice uh, two sets of discarded body armor. Well, not so much as discarded. They're sort of just laying there on the floor with a uniform, but no organic matter. Just the uniform, no armor. Or just the uniform and armor. armor. It's armor. Okay. <clears> hey, <throat> okay. well, I found two sets of armor. Dr. Henson. Good. Good. I thank you, sir. Although I feel like you being the captain should wear it. You guys come first. That's not how that's supposed to work. I don't think we can really say no since he's the captain. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Doc. I'd, I'd try to pull rank because, you know, his medical health is probably the most important for the crew of the ship, but. Yeah. <laughs> Are we really, any of us, really in very good medical health right at the current moment? Yep. <laughs> I mean, I think all of us are fine. We might not be the most mentally all right after this. Experience. I was going to say, we might have to have a little visit to the counselor afterwards. Stop yeah, arguing. I'm good. Stop take the armor. Does, does the Concordia have a counselor? Yeah, I'm sh they're just waiting to be statted, I'm sure. There's over 750 people on that ship. It probably is a counselor. Yeah, it does. It's a Gorn. She's quite nice. There we go, Gorn counselor. 
It's been... Lauren Counselor. Yeah. It is. It has been said. It is canon. Her name is Wednesday. <laughs> it is a thing. No, her name is Thursday. Oh, of course. Right. <laughs> I was gonna say Wednesday is already around. <laughs> Anyways, back on topic. Oh, <laughs> I'll stat her later. <laughs> uh... All right. Those two get the armor. Okay. Uh, be sure to mark that on your character sheets. Uh, Captain, inside the chief of security's office, you find a hastily scrawled note. It says... Dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it said, first contact was a failure. Captain, first officer are dead. Uh... The, uh, ah, not the lunette, the other ship. The Arion has been destroyed. The, 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 uh, aliens have released a dangerous virus, question mark, that destroys organic matter. No ships yeah. capable of leaving. We will die here. Okay, ouch. All right, possible virus. Let's go to sickbay. Suit up. Let's go. Captain, can you do me a daring plus... Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, daring plus security test, please. Daring. Security... Oh, no. Wow. Double oh, no. Okay. So that complication basically cancels out the complication I rolled. <laughs> Wait, are you saying two complications make a right? No, I don't think that's the way it works, but that's what he wants to do. Yeah, two wrongs go. don't make a right, but two rights make a left. Uh, no, two rights make a 180. Uh... Uh, sure, yeah. Two rights make us lost. Where are we? <laughs> uh, uh, Captain, you uh, see a in the darkness. Your your flashlight catches a long tail like thing slink into the uh, darkness as it heads to the far side of the uh, security office. And that is really all you get. We are not alone in here. Okay, so based on where you guys were last, this is you guys are in here. Uh, Moore, I believe you were in the wait. Uh, let's see. So which two of you got the body armor? Was that Hadrix and Ferliza? I was giving it to the two juniors. Okay, so sorry uh, that was... More. Okay, so Moore and Ferliza. All three of you are in there. Um, Captain Bashir is in here. And the hissing sound came from somewhere over here. <clears throat> and at this point, we are going to be in initiative order. Be where we are going to be sort of in combat, sort of not, because each one of you will move, and then something could happen. Oh no, my, Reinhardt, or you're going to have your own fun. We'll get to you. <laughs> Yay! You, we'll get to you. It's just this is where the bulk of the players are, so sadly this is the bulk <laughs> of the screen time. Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You I split the party on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, which one of you wants to go first? Uh, so it would take a... Basically, it takes a minor action to change quote-unquote zones. So if you want to, you know, get into the hallway... <laughs> and then get into the center area. That will be two minor actions, a.k.a. your turn. Mm -hmm. And we'll go... We'll, we'll try it like this, see how it goes. Um, the center is the most defendable, but it's also the most vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, what's the uh, resistance on our armor that we found? I believe it's resist. It's standard Starfleet, so I believe it's resistance one. Okay, got it. Um, for Lisa's going to use their minor action to move into the hallway, mm -hmm. and 
Yeah, they're gonna take the uh, they're gonna take the guard action again. <laughs> okay, uh, I should mention we're now a scene change, so you lose one momentum. Oh, Got know. it. Mm. I want to point out one thing. Yep. EVA armor is one. Yeah. Body armor is two. Ah, thanks for thanks ah. for reminding me. So it's two resistance. Oh, neat. Yep. All right. So insight security for my good old guard task. <clears throat> Survey says. Don't have a focus. That's the one success. So that's one momentum, I believe. Yep. Okay. So you are in the hallway and guarding. Yep. Okay. And now it is my turn, which does. Uh, nope, that's this. No one can see what I'm doing yet because no one can actually see this. No one is actually knowing what to look for. And it is going to enter here. Okay. So, Verliza is gone. Next up, who wants to go next? I'll head. Okay. And what do you wish to do, Captain? Moving. I'll do my... I still want us to head out and head towards the... And see if we can find anything about if this was a virus or not to move towards. I want to move out, basically. Okay. So uh, I'll take my full movement and head out towards the right. here. Okay. So there you go. You are over here. Yep. Cool. Okay. Uh, next up is the rest of you guys. So who wants to do something next? I'll move here and guard. All right. Uh, roll your insight security. I believe it's difficulty zero and you're already maxed out, so I'll just give it to you. <laughs> Unless you get enough floating momentum to create an advantage. I don't know what else you can use it for. No picking uh, parcel tongue? <laughs> yeah, no. No. Okay. You are guarding. Congratulations. Hadrix. Hello, Hadrix. Oh, I think he said he had to oh, go AFK. He right? might have an issue, and he'll oh. be back as soon as he can. Okay, so we're just going to assume that Hadrix is going to stay with Moore and will guard him. Guard, yeah. Yeah, okay. Next up is my turn. Bad guys get to go first unless one of you want to, you know, spend momentum to hold the initiative. No, I think we're... Let's see what this creepy thing is. Okay. So, let's... Cool. Okay, um, because Hadrix is currently away, uh, we will be doing... Uh, Moore, there is a loud crash as the door to the center area is pulled apart. Literally, pulled apart. Oh, this one in front of me. Yeah, this one in front of you. Oh, lovely. As. Let's see. <laughs> this thing leaps out at you. Oh, that noise. That totally <gasps> looks like a villain from Power Rangers. <laughs> what is that? What is that? <laughs> a, uh, <laughs> a, long, a long, slender type creature. A, you really can't get a good eye on it. It's almost pitch black. Uh, the thing that is right in front of you, where its eyes should be, is a black sheen and two sets of jaws open up and begin to strike at Ensign Moore. Uh, Ensign Moore, you are going to... I am going to spend a threat for a third dice. Boy as he is going to attempt to attack you. Uh, nope, Good thing not, I have armor. We are not using the murder bear. We are using this thing. Uh, let's see. So. Uh, nope, I'm adding a third dice. That's a complication. Okay. okay, so that is two 
two successes. Okay. I'm going to spend a momentum on a third die. Okay. Uh, so you already have one free because you're in guard mode. So you really only need one success to... Oh, no, I'm sorry. This creature has the... Uh... Nope, nope, never mind. I'm sorry. I gave him that for something else. Uh, yeah, so you are able to dodge out of the way horribly. Like, with reflexes, you uh, only a terrified Ensign Moore has. <laughs> Uh, as it plants itself between you and Hadrix. Uh, if you want to do something about that, you have the ability to basically regain... Uh, ah, sorry. You can gain... Ah, sorry. Deal damage. There. Yeah, I will... Uh, kind of out of fright, like, like take the bungee and, like, whip it. Mm-hmm. For... Holy sh- That's some nice. damage. Okay. Uh, that is six points of damage. Um, cool. <clears throat> so, this, uh, sadly, uh, it does have a bit of armor, but thanks to the complication is that it sort of loses its footing. It fully expected to attack... Or, grab one of you, and it kind of failed on that front, so it's sort of between you and Hadrix at the moment. But that's its turn, so you guys get to do stuff. <laughs> uh, I, For some reason I imagine that Hadrix would also be smacking it, like, out of... because he has yeah. the weight staff. I'm pretty just... sure he would. Uh, let's see how well Hadrix does. Because I don't think he's back... Nope, he's still muted. Okay. Let's... I have Hadrix's sheet here. Should we give him a momentum for a third die? Do you yes. want him to have one? I... Okay. Yeah. Alright. Executive order number 12. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, daring security. Uh, nope, sorry. He gets 3d20, not 2. Though admittedly, I think as much as a nerd as he is, he'd be very upset he's missing fighting the Xenomorph. Yeah. Oh, there will be other times, I'm sure. Right. The knight is young. So he gets... Ooh. Oh, four So is more. Nice. Um, so, uh, let's see what the hunter does. And I closed off the character sheet for the hunter because I am good GM. Okay. The hunter kind of like faceplant though. Oh yeah, it did, but he still has enough to defend. He just doesn't get the. Uh... Well, hmm. I'll try to roll this. Well, I also I also yeah. hit him with my thing, which is the knockdown. Oh yeah, that's right, and I didn't spend threat, so I will give him one less success on whatever he rolls. Unless that's how knockdown. You... I don't actually you... remember how knockdown work. Well, the effects of being knocked down. You know. What? Let's just say that Hadrix will do damage and move on from this, um, which is, I believe, he has a security of three, so five challenge dice. Do we get two momentum from that roll? Uh, let's see. There's that. Uh, he didn't roll it opposed, so I'm going to roll opposed just to see how much momentum you get. Uh, no. So you get one momentum. Uh, let's see, number of dice. Okay, so... <clears throat> it lands with a thunk along the side of the creature. Okay, um... And, as his minor action, he is going to go here and... Ensign, come on! We need to move Yes, now. sir! And... Doctor! <laughs> Mr. Forliza, yeah, yeah. You, you are completely... Uh, you have no idea what the heck is going on. You hear screams and uh, scuffles. May or may not be girly screams from more. You know. Oh, um, okay. Um, I'm going to... 
Yeah, I'm just gonna Bravely dash, run away. Dash <laughs> in the room, see see the creature and be like, oh god, and then move into here. <laughs> that is fair. Uh Ensign Moore, I believe you have or Captain and Moore. All right, folks, let's move. Yeah, I'm following. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Captain Muse has his turn to bug out. <clears throat> uh, why am I just... Okay, fine. And you guys have dealt enough damage that this thing lets out a screech, scampers up, tears a hole into the ceiling, and scampers off. <laughs> Okay, it's in the ceiling. This is not good. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Game over, man. Game over. They're all around us. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you say that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, all right. while we had that fun, uh, where are you guys going next? Lab. Or, uh, you know, not uh, medical... I want to see if there's any research on whatever this virus or. <laughs> Fair. Uh, what the? Sorry. <clears throat> oh, uh, roll twenty has bugged. Let's refresh. <clears throat> the alien token would not answer my commands. It has gained sentience and will kill us all. Okay, there we go. Smooth. Okay, so. Moose. Uh, you have body armor and an engineering tricorder. And I believe two power packs left for your disruptors? Mm -hmm. And a hyperspanner. Oh, yes, that's right. And a hyperspanner. What do you wish to do? Uh, I guess I'm going to try and meet the guys down at uh, deck 70. <laughs> okay. And may I ask how you plan on doing that? Jeffrey's tubes. Okay. <clears throat> The way of the future. The tubes. It's like the internet. Yep. A series of tubes. <laughs> cool. Are you doing anything with the tricorder at the moment? Um, I'm just going to scan for any um, power signatures. Okay. Um, yeah, just keep an eye on that. Okay. Uh, Actually, I want to see if I can try and scan the um, warp core of the station. Ah, okay. Um, that is going to be an insight plus engineering. Uh, difficulty of two. Which is a difficulty of one because tricorder. Yay, tricorder. Uh, warp core mechanics. Or power systems, one or the other. Yep. Right. Yeah, because it's a station, I don't believe it has a warp core. At least I, des I designed it with uh, two fusion reactors. Because there's no need for it to go to warp. Okay, uh, you got the one success you need. So, you notice a couple things. Uh, the first is that the secondary reactor, uh, so the one that is located, I believe, on deck 50-ish, is still online. It appears to be running at approximately 2% power, but it's still online. That's where you're suspecting the artificial gravity and the stale oxygen is being pumped through. Uh, because okay. that's uh, from what... You rem what you may have learned about from the station's layout is that those systems are roughly in the same area. Uh, you also the metal uh, the metallurgy of the station indicates that it is approximately 20 years older than it should be. Um, and I believe that answers your question. Anything else you were looking for? Uh, nope, that's everything for now. I guess instead of me, since it's on the way down, I will stop at deck 50. Okay. Uh, are you just walking, uh, rappelling, yodeling? Uh, if it's, I'm going to be taking the Jeffrey's tubes, I'm just going to be going down any junction okay. um, I come across. Okay. Uh, roll me a insight security, please. And this is going to be opposed. Uh, training? Uh, Mako talent will work. Okay. I'm taking the momentum, guys, just so I can not get my head eaten. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> so you are uh, you are roughly along uh, you have made it down to prop 
by your guesstimate, about deck 23 or so, uh, finding one of the Jeffrey's tube shafts. And say what you will, they're still un moderately uncomfortable, but at least um, thanks to you know station designer Miles O'Brien and a few others who have had to live through the Jeffrey's tube days, they're a little more accessible. Plus, I'm pretty sure there was OSHA um, standards required for allowing of disabled engineers like you know yourself, should you <laughs> be not have your leg. Anyways, still, that is uh, not enough as you make your way down to a junction box in deck uh, 23 or so as it gets the jump on you. You feel uh, two on your good leg. Uh, you feel six slender claws reach around, grab you, and immediately pull you back. And you find yourself face to face with one of these things in the Jeffrey's tubes. So really, you find yourself boot to face. Oh, my boot to its face? Well, you're more than welcome to try. Um, so <laughs> it gets the jump on you. So it gets the uh, initial attack. Uh, so let's see how well it does. This one. I'm gonna have this character sheet open. I'm making it a separate window. So I don't and communications have been open this whole entire time, so I hear yeah. them fighting that thing. Yes, you know that they're fighting something. All right. Yeah. I just hear them running. <laughs> it's like hmm, they forgot about me. Yeah, they've you know they've already written you off as dead apparently. So you know. You might want to have a talk to your captain about, you know, asset management and team dynamics, but, you know, that's just... His counter will be, you went by yourself. I'm like, yes, that is fair. Good point. Yeah. I am going to spend a threat for a third dice. Oh, no. And that's three successes. You're defending. That means you need three successes or more. Okay. Uh, I will take a momentum for an extra dice. Okay. Do... Oh, not security. Oh. Hip. There's your three hey. successes. All right. Congratulations. Uh, you are able to successfully make an attack against it. All right. Boot to the head. Boot to the head. Okay, unarmed strike. I believe that's five challenge dice. And you have mean right hook. Yep. Um, that, be, that brought us down to three originally, right? Did, did, did someone subtract my... Okay, no. uh, I'm going to take one more for those two zeros. So I want to get this thing taken out as quickly as possible. Well, there's a five, six damage, I believe, from that effect. Cool. And it's an arm, so it's knocked down as well. Yeah, well, you're kind of in the, uh, tell you what, uh, because you beat it, you have one effect, so I will spend one threat so it does not get knocked down. Okay. Uh, your boot hits hard. There's a thunk, sort of as if you are hitting a, uh, sort of a, a thick skull of some sort. Creature appears to be well armored, and you allow yourself a moment of annoyance at not doing it enough damage. However, it is your turn to, you know, do something. I'm a fire my my disruptor at it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, control security, please. And I'm going to say, if you weren't so goddamn mean, you'd be a great friend to Gertie. Okay, that's a lot of successes. Uh, roll some damage, please. Uh, what is the uh, disruptor damage? I believe it is one. Uh, it is a disruptor pistol, which I believe is. I'm going to have that open here. It is. Disruptor pistol is three challenge dice. So seven. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow. Uh, and because, uh, let's see, Disruptor Pistol, also Vicious 1. So that would be 12 points of damage. Uh, yeah, so I would be very scared if the creature wasn't immune to energy. <laughs> Come on! So you're... <laughs> As you uh, fire at it, it's you. Uh, your beam strikes it, and nothing happens. It does not seem <laughs> phased by this in the least. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Those are some good rules. You know, every now and then I have to break. You know, <laughs> this is a Halloween episode. I can't make it complete oh. affair, can I? Um, also, how many momentum did we gain for that? Uh, I think, uh, let's see. So that would be two momentum gained. So at least it was good for something. Yeah. Uh, and it was a learning experience. It was a learning experience. <laughs> uh, the only guns I can ever rely on are both my arms. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see if we'll see what he does with this, uh, because he is going to attempt to attack you again. And since I am running low on threat, I'm just going to do this, you know, standard two, and hope for the best. Well, that's two successes. Okay. Uh, I'll just do two for now. Okay, I get hurt. You get hurt. How badly do you get hurt? Uh, let's see. So, that is Vicious 1. That is uh, 8 points of damage. Ah, but I resist 2. You resist 2, so that's 6. Uh, what's the action to avoid damage? I think you have to avoid injury. I think that's spending a determination. I thought there was another one, too. There's oh. one where I have to roll. Oh, probably. Uh, tell you what. Uh, roll me Daring plus... I, th I think it's fitness. Yeah, fitness security sounds good. It's one of those things that isn't in the GM screen, and I have to dig through the book, and it's in like three separate places. Thanks, Modifius. Anyways. Uh, roll me fitness security. Um, uh, Jim could be listening. <laughs> if he does, hi, Jim. I'm making a complete botchery of your rule set. Sorry. Uh, oh, hang on. Got two. Uh, okay. Minimize that. There we go. Okay. Um, tell you what, because I don't want to spend hours pawing through the core rule book trying to find that, I will say that you take the stress damage but avoid the injury. Okay. Whew. So it's your turn. I'm going to fight it. <laughs> going to punch it. Okay. As you uh, somehow spin around within the Jeffrey's tube. Engineering's talent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Just because I'm going to pop my determination for success. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'll do whatever it takes to return home to my family. Yep, that's a good one. Alright. Well, three. Three successes. Uh, let's see what it does in response. Uh, let's see. Now it's got the two successes, so it's going to do more damage to you, buddy. Sorry. Wait, I have three, though. Oh, well, I'm sorry. That's right. I was <laughs> like, wait. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I had already forgotten you spent the determination. <laughs> Yay. Uh, my bad. Uh, you are able to escape it. Or you're able to punch it, so roll me some damage. That and I'm going to use a momentum for those two. Okay. <laughs> nice. There is a sickening crunch as you, as your, um, 
as uh, using your the there's a sickening crunch as your fists manage to sort of make a uh, fist like you know the clapping of the ears uh, thing that they often do to disorient people mm-hmm. yeah just picture that with your closed fists that's really <laughs> as much momentum as you can get in these enclosed spaces as you leave a decently dented skull um, and any car dealership would now call this well worn but it is Reinhardt enough. slaps the roof with the top of the alien and dies. Yeah. Uh, that is enough, and it scampers. It turns around, uh, n- nearly missing you with its blade-like tail, and scurries away. Hey, Captain. Uh, yeah, Moose. I want a pet. Another one. Ow. I'm going to be down on deck 50 at some point. Can you meet me there? We think that the it's some sort of virus. We're heading to the med lab right now. After that, we can head that way up. All right. If I can get the reaction to at least partial power, we might be able to get back the internal defenses back on. That's oh, like a great plan. By the way, apparently this station's been like this for 20 years. Okay. How'd you find that out? I got a tricorder out of a replicator. Good job. All right, we'll meet you at 50 as soon as we can. Uh, If you don't see me right away, just look for the blood trail. Captain out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, in the infirmary. Uh, hang on, let me get the characters into the infirmary. It would help if I alphabetized these set pieces for easier reference. But that would make sense. S comes after R. There we go. infirmary so the four of you apparently the captain didn't copy over there's the captain uh, force your or make your way into security it's quite handy that uh, at some point in the past uh, someone has pried open the bars or not the bars pried open the door uh, with a hole large enough for two people to walk abreast uh, inside the infirmary <clears throat> Uh, again, thick layer of dust. There is a something is there is a flickering of light coming through one of the uh, doors coming from roughly around here. Okay, well, that's slightly ominous. Right, but obviously we'll make our way there. <laughs> okay, so what you guys see, uh, Doctor Ferliza. Uh, your eyes light up as you can see that a medical tricorder has been jury-rigged uh, into the station's power, directly into the station's power supply, and is hooked up in one of the upper corners of the uh, up of this uh, science lab, and that seems to be what is emanating the light. Hmm. Actually, we established that Sickbay has its own power supply. We did, didn't we? Funny. Okay, then it's hooked into sick base power supply. Uh, yeah, I. Yeah, I guess I'll grab the medical tricorder. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is an, or there is one active. Or, sorry, there is one active. Um, entry. Hmm. I will set entry. Or look at yeah. whatever. It is a law. It is a text entry from one Doctor Sulkin. Hang on, let me find it here. First encounter with the Prost so did not go as planned. They had and they had advertised them or they had announced themselves as a Federation style uh, form of government, much more advanced technologically than our own. 
However, uh, in an attempt to please them, we made the tactical mistake of gathering many of our f senior officers in one place. This made it perfect when they released, or this made for the perfect opportunity when they released their programmable matter weapon to annihilate all organic life. It is currently making their way down. It is fortunate that I find such a f first contacts to be tedious and did not attend in person, giving me enough time to save a copy of this of these uh, readings for future use. It is my hope that our deaths will somehow save the Federation and any other species from the Prost so. Farewell. And uh, on oh. on it is a fairly uh, ex is a downloaded copy of the station's internal sensor data of the first contact meeting. Uh, the first contact presentation, I suppose, that was supposed to be in the conference room. Hmm. Uh, what do these sensor readings say? Well, the sensor readings basically say that it is a tide of matter of unknown origin and a fairly complicated communication structure. It has all seems to have been uh, co it all s uh, the communications all seem to be tied to a headdress style um, garment worn on one of the Prostso's heads. Uh, as, uh, it is a rather disturbing image. Um, so picture the Prosts. Well, I, I would be. Let's actually go and see the Prostso, shall we? So the Prostso base lo would look like this. Oh, okay. Um, f slender for the most part. Uh, standing according to their medical tricorder scans, they would be approximately five to five feet. Tall, uh, wearing very oh. ornate armor or ceremonial wear, hard to tell. That appears to have been a gold or brass, bronze, something shiny and lustrous. During the meeting, uh, with Captain Crawford and Lieutenant Commander Dolmer, with Admiral Riker uh, watching from the seats, there was a rather pomp and circumstance speech. Very good one given by Captain Crawford. Um, he's been working on it for months, well, maybe <coughs> a week. Uh, much polite applause, and as soon as the quote-unquote, well, it's hard to tell gender, uh, the more slender of the two walks up, and as soon as she does, her garments completely, for lack of a better term, liquefy, creating a wave of liquid gold that uh, emanates from her. It envelops Commander Crawford, and Literally, his uniform crumples as it devours him almost instantaneously. Security is quick to respond, shooting both into both parties. But they have uh, very powerful force fields that prevent this from happening. As the uh, golden wave jumps from target to target, eating and devouring them. They don't even have time to scream as it enters their orifices devouring them from the insides out. Soon, all is quiet. And the two look at each other. And his robes begin to liquefy. And they be, and the what follows is a cascade of golden death and destruction as it rains down through the station. Suicide. Hmm. With the information you have here, Doctor, is there any way you can come up with a cure? Or, I know we're not working with much, but is it a possibility? Um, from what I'm looking at here, Captain, I believe the phrasing I want to use is possible, but not probable. But I can try. Do what you can, Doctor. 
if not, our best chance is to stop this first contact from happening, for one. If not, if we can't stop it, I'd like to have a backup and to protect the life on the station. If we get back in time. There's a small Could flash behind you. With the force field? <laughs> oh, the blue human's so smart. Yes. Uh, you're funny. Even if you broke my toys. And hurt scraps. Who's... Oh. He's one of my pets. So, young lady, we've figured out your mystery. <laughs> yes. Yes, you did. Can we go stop this now? <laughs> Roll me presence plus command. <laughs> Okay, I'm taking momentum. <laughs> Bye, sir. <laughs> and I am going to use diplomacy. Okay, yeah. Come on, baby. Well, that's uh, two successes and a complication. Hmm, how do I want to do the complication? Hmm. Oh. Oh, I know. So, she's like, she nods and thinks, why, yes. I think it is. And then there's another flash. Uh, sorry, let me get my sound effects going. So if he's going to enter, it's going to be properly. Oh, no. Ah. As Captain Q appears... Oh, this is where you've been. He looks. Oh, you're trying to. You're trying to. Are you trying to test them? <laughs> he pats her on the head. Oh, such a smart young girl. Much better than your brother. Hmm. Chose his mother over me. <laughs> ah, yes. Hmm, I don't recognize any of you. You must not be Captain Croft. Nope, of course not. They died. You must be his replace. No, that's no. You, any even Cisco would not have let the station go to this mess. Hmm. Collins is still open with Reinhardt, right? Yeah, I am cap. I am Captain Bashir of the USS Concordia. Hmm. Oh, I. You're one of th ah. You're an Andorian. I am. Ah, see, sweetie, you can tell that they're an Andorian and not a human by the their little twiggly. Antennas up there, and their self—it's very difficult to tell their self-righteousness apart from any of them. So you know, just they—they may look like blue humans, but they're actually Andorian. I know all these bipedal species look alike. You can blame the—you can blame their originators. We'll meet them one day when you're ready. Now, all well, that speciesist. I'm the only one that is even remotely close to being full human. <laughs> Yes, yes, whatever. Ah, semantics. Q, I beg you, can we please stop this incident from happening? You've had experience with Captain Crawford before. Yes. And I know that you've had many incidences with the Federation. And I can't see you wanting all of these people to die. Well, no, after... Of course not. Why would I want to completely wreck my one of my favorite resort destinations in this part of the space? After all, Captain Cro... The captain has yet to meet the, uh... Well, of, meet my offspring. I wanted to make sure that they were proper age before doing so, otherwise they would just, you know, dematerialize him with a thought. Yes, I think that's for the best. <sighs> Sweetie, you did a very good job with your first test. Now, there's a couple things that we should have learned. Like, for example, there should have been more scraps. There are only three of them. Not not enough of a challenge. Now, 
An impending death would have been far more interesting. Like, take the oxygen away from the station. We'll, we'll practice. We'll practice. Yes. We'll find another You, starter. sir, sound like a giant douche canoe. And on that note, uh, Captain, he literally reaches through your comm badge. Uh, Moose, you feel a hand reach out of yours <laughs> and pulls you through fifth dimensional space. It hurts like hell. And he pulls you to the... Oh. You are one of the... You're far older than the rest. Oh, time travel. Of course. No, not time travel. Oh. Oh, that's clever. He taps, oh. You, on, he taps you on the head. Even for a human, that's actually kind of smart. Well, it was a dumbass that got through the deflect edition and caused all those issues. Eh, is what it is. Semantics at this point. You're here now. Man, you think you can... You think any of your insults are better than macro brains? No. Be gone, all of you. Do what you need to do. He waves his hand. <laughs> Hopefully he can go back to making wine with Picard now. <laughs> uh, there's a flash as all of you end up back on the bridge of the Concordia. Am I still having those car box in me? Yes, uh, you are kind of bleeding over the engineering console. Um, the little girl queue is still there on the bridge. Uh, it was very nice meeting you. I hope you play again soon. That. It was very nice meeting you too. She flashes. Oh, thank you. Doctor, to the lab. Take yeah. care of Reinhardt. See if what you can figure I out. I was with already, him. and he's already like halfway to the yeah. door. Yeah. To work. Already take on. Reinhardt and figure Morris, out what you can do. More is also going for a scientific approach. <laughs> yeah, I'm just pulling ahead. one of the little emergency med kits to grab a cauterizer, and I'm just sealing up the blood. Nope. Nope. No, you're more for Lisa both grab Reinhardt and pull him into the the turbo Let's go. I, I want to see them try that. <laughs> it probably, it probably takes more effort than opening that damn door. <laughs> uh, Primrose, maximum warp to D space well, fifteen. Impulse. Impulse. Yes. To the, oh yes, to the impulse to the through the wormhole or the. Of course, Captain. Uh, Primrose, you have absolutely no idea what happened. Um, one second, you were just m doing your job on navigating. You were at the Concordia, or you were at the Carceri Nebula entrance. All of a sudden, this girl said it was nice to meet them. Uh, Moose started spouting blood, and everybody looks a little haggard. And also had body armor. For some reason. <laughs> yeah, three of us have body armor. Pearly, this is just carrying a fucking weight stick thing. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, this garden is... curious. But she pushes the button anyway to just go maximum impulse. Later. <laughs> uh, okay, so you are... Uh, let's see. So, it'll take a few minutes for you guys to reach the station. So, let's do the medical stuff first. In sick bay. Oh, I'm kind of rising the runes on the turbo lift if they're trying to pull me. <laughs> okay. Uh, daring plus medicine, then, for you, please, Mr. Uh, uh, we have Mr. Forliza. Moose. They can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Forliza could do it, but, you know, Moose seems to be taking the lead on this, so. Yay, for the giggles, I'm going to take a momentum. <laughs> sure. Uh, this is a scene change, if that wasn't incredibly clear. So. Use the sonic screwdriver to plug the hole. <laughs> I mean... Uh, yeah, the the wound is sealed, and you'll regain up two points of stress, let's say. Well, that wasn't that bad. Mm. Okay. <laughs> As you guys make your... Oh, the turtle lifts is filled with the smell of burnt flesh. <laughs> but, you know, I'll... I'll put some, like, you know, a high road with, like, an anti-inflammatory and all that kind of fun stuff in there, too. All don't, right. Don't take the scar away. The wife likes them. 
Okay, meanwhile, all of you trudge into Sick Bay. Uh, uh, Reinhardt, are you staying with them now that you're blood now that you're no longer bloodied? Oh no, I'm gonna go to engineer and work on a plan to um uh prevent whatever attack is going to happen. Sure. I'm, I'm assuming you guys shared with the fact that they used um, manipulated molecules and Oh yes, matter. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take that information and work on a dampening field. Okay. So you're going to head that way. Ah, for Lisa and Moore are going to head this way. And because this is medical, we have Dr. Quiff is, you know, holding station. As you guys burst in, looking like there's a fire on you. You know, you're escaping a fire. So, under normal circumstances, this would be an extended task. However, you don't have enough time for an extended task. Uh, so this is going to be a difficulty five. Oh, good. Test. Um, so either this will either be a, and quite frankly, this is also daring because you don't have a heck of a lot of time. So daring plus science or daring plus medicine, whichever one of you wants to take the lead on this. Uh, the other can assist, of course, with daring science, daring medical. Um, if you have things along the line of particle physics... Um, I have physics. Um, <laughs> I'll Reverse let, engineering. <laughs> I'll let physics work on this. I'm um, shooting for a grand total of 12. Yeah. Nanobiology, um, extraterrestrial techno... Or, actually, exotech. this... Given who worked on this before, uh, for Lisa, your exobiology will work too, so... Hey! Yeah, uh, what's so, your daring medicine? Uh, my daring medicine is a 14. So why don't you take the lead, because you are shooting for a higher and have a focus. I'll assist, because yeah. I have a 12. And still have a focus, but... Let's see, yeah. Um, Let's pop my determination here. Okay. And uh, what's... For, for the value of to boldly go... <laughs> Hmm. I mean, um, you are doing boldly going stuff. So. Yeah. But can I pop my determination? I'm afraid <laughs> not for well, assisting, I don't think. I, I have Spirit of Discovery, so I can pop a determination to add three points of momentum. Oh. Okay. Oh. And this is the perfect time for the science doesn't lie. <laughs> okay, so you're popping your determination to add momentum. Cool. Okay, yes. so you're up to four momentum. Okay. Um, in that Spirit case... And... I also have uh, a potential, so I can get it back. Nice. Oh, yes. Yeah, so uh, feel free to roll your dice. Sorry, for Lisa, go so, ahead. Uh, two, momen eh, two momentum for a third die. Mm -hmm. And let's... Yeah. Uh, now, you're also in sick bay. Um, so I will... S um, how do I want to word this? Um, making the difficulty easier doesn't want to work, or won't work. Um, how do I want to play this... Uh, tell you what, because you're in sick bay, I will let the ship assist as well. Yeah. yeah. With uh, computers plus yeah. medicine for sick bay. Okay, so it's not that you need it. You already so have that's the five ship. successes we yeah. need. Okay. Uh, Moore doesn't assist. Uh, who's got the ship? You can pull up the ship. All right. Captain, feel free to roll the ship. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, let me look at my. Can I find the ship? Oh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> oh, damn. I can't let Chief of Staff work here because Moore is using science instead yeah. of medicine. <laughs> my medicine's a one. I wouldn't have been any. I mean, that's that. fair. But you could have re rolled it if you were using medicine. A uh, ship. Uh, I'm doing uh, computers, medicine. Computers, medicine, yes, please. <clears throat> well, that's six successes, so you have a floating momentum. I'm not sure what you'll do with we it. Have, we get a momentum. Yep, sorry, right. Sorry, it's getting. It's been a long game. We haven't done a break. And since we're so close to the end, I'm not going to bother. So, you know. Okay. Uh, for Lisa, you're the one taking charge. Something about this twinges something in your memory. And you start digging immediately into the medical files of Voyager's doctor. Huh? Primary care for um, Seven of Nine. 
as well as several other uh, crewmen who were affected by the Saliar um, and the Saliar's technology of, they're called Katums or Katums. They were never actually spoken loud. I call them Katums. Uh, they're basically programmable matter. The, the doctor only <laughs> made some success with them. Um, despite their extremely advanced technology, the doctor had limited success getting them to revert back to their natural state. But once they reverted back to natural, he couldn't do anything with them. Still, that was a fairly good amount of progress. That took about five years of study for him before he moved on to other things that seemed more pressing. Still, the, assuming the technology is the same, or perhaps these are primitive Katums, you and for Moore might be able to uh, do something funky to generate a signal burst to kill them. But you have to move fast. Anyways, moving on down to engineering. It is a pretty standard day in engineering until Moose bursts through the door. Blood-soaked uniform on one side. Like, okay, got an engineering problem we need to figure out, and I got a couple of ideas. Uh, Bloody hell! It looks like you've been through another Saturday night like I have! Yeah, this is actually from class. Those little kids are vicious. Yeah, I know! I got 12 of them! Well, I just got the one. Anyways... We're going to have to quickly come up with an idea on how to lock a magnetic field in matter. We need to generate a field that prevents matter from being rewritten, manipulated, or changed in any shape, or form. Okay. We need to figure out exactly how we can do this without suffocating individuals. And this is going to be a similar test. So daring, daring plus engineering, difficulty five. And because you're in main engineering, the ship can assist as well as one NPC or one support character. Um, okay. Uh, if you have yeah, particle physics would work. Um, alien technology would work. Experimental technology. I'll let that fly. Woo. Systems. Uh, now I know I used a determination game. earlier, but yeah. uh, can I use a milestone? Um, because we play weekly, um, that would be two milestones to recreate to reget your determination. So use okay. it wisely. Um, well, we got three momentum. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who wants to assist? I got the ship for you. Got on it. Uh, I'm going to take the two momentum for. Uh, three momentum. Hmm, what was that? Three momentum for two extra die. Yeah. And just because the GM once said this, he was low. Uh, GM, you can have some threats so I can take a fifth dice. <laughs> okay. Not for the beans, at least. True. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. What's the ship rolling? Uh, computers plus engineering. That is one, four, five. five. That's the f uh, five successes you need. Nicely done. Uh, so, in the span of... 20 minutes, the 20 minutes it takes to get from the entrance of the Carcerine Nebula into the Nebula proper, uh, you are able to come up with a way to modulate the deflector dish to create a nadionic pulse, or, or that will sustain a, a nadionic pulse, and should be able to extend it lar to cover the radius of the station. Uh, are we in communication range of the station as well? Uh, we are just about to get to that. Yeah. Okay. Because we are going to cut to the bridge. Uh, so, uh, Hadrix and Captain Bashir, you are on the bridge and you are able to see this Carceri Nebula interior and the station. There's also a ship present, which I will put down as soon as I figure out the token. Uh, here we are. Um, there yes. is one thing I want to do as well. Mm-hmm is I want to cache this information of what we're doing, and the moment we can establish connections to the station, send it to Rami. Fair enough. And what you guys see is this ship. Uh, standing roughly with a roughly one kilometer uh, from tip to tip, or wings 
with a wingspan, I should say, of roughly one kilometer, and a massive glowing orb that is generating un a massive amount of power in the center of it. Uh, it this ship is golden uh, with bright blue lights accenting it. Uh, it appears to be docked within the station. Or, uh, not docked, it's just holding station by the station. Stationary orbit. Yeah. Be sure to Admiral Riker and Captain uh, Crawford. Level one. Uh, Level Cap one emergency. Uh, Captain Crawford, you are busy putting on the, your best dress uniform and working on your the speech that you have spent at least a week preparing ever since... Uh, you, I would say... <laughs> you hear Crawford uh, over the communication, you hear like a me, 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 me. Let up. Yes, Captain Bashir? Stop the first contact meeting now. We have information that this is a suicide bombing attempt. Um, I'll explain later. Just don't let them on board. Okay. Okay, and I'll, if that information hasn't reached Admiral Riker, I will immediately read it to him. Admiral Riker uh, enters your, uh, uh, Admiral Riker enters your, oh, oh, sorry. Admiral Riker enters the captain's office a moment after communications have ceased. He's already in his dress uniform. He's had much more practice putting it on than you have. Uh, captain, what the hell's going on? It's a good question, but I think we should have... Eh. I think we're supposed to believe the crew of the Concordia. I mean, might be some fiddling with the Temporal Prime Directive, or if it's who I'm thinking, Q. I think we should listen to them. Captain, the amount of the number of times in my career that my ass has been saved by someone pull, literally popping out at the last second and telling us to change from our previously decided upon actions is far too many times for me to count. More more times than my beard has hairs. I'll see what I can do to postpone the arrangements and keep the and uh, keep the prot so at bay try and get whatever information you can out of the captain if this is one of his uh andorians aren't known for being much practical jokers but this would be a bad time for one to be found okay now while that's going yes, on oh, sorry i said it just said yes admiral <laughs> he spins on his heels and walks out with the determination of a man who's 40 instead of approaching 80 yeah 80 the new 40 yeah, basically. Yay, sci Starfleet math, or Starfleet medicine. Anyways, um, next up is the... Now that you're in comms range, I believe that you wanted to... Or that Moose wanted to tie things in with Rami. Yep. Okay. So, if you could roll... Uh, roll me a control plus engineering, please. And the computer will... Mm, no, the station will assist. But I don't actually have the station's sheet ported over, so I will just roll for the station. Alright. Um... Uh, this will be a difficulty of one, given the amount of moment. Actually, you have no momentum, so cool. Difficulty one. Alright. Uh, experimental technology? Uh, com yeah, that'll work. Well, uh, Rami doesn't assist. I should have rolled one die, but even that wouldn't be enough to assist. But that's the success you need. Uh, While there's... he's doing that, I'm going to put Hendrix in charge of the bridge and head down to transporter, and I'd like to transport straight to Crawford's office. Okay. Uh, you are... Bear... Uh, you are... In... Ah, you enter the transporter room the same time for Lisa and Moore do, as they have rigged a tricorder to emit this particular signal. Uh, let's see. Where is the... 
transporter room. Okay. Hey, look, all the tokens are still here. Cool. What do you know? Okay. Uh, for Lisa, you and Moore are just going to beam over anyways when all of a sudden the doors open again and the captain strides in. Hello, Captain. captain. Greetings. <clears throat> and Tegan just looks at you and says, Destination, sirs? Send them to straight to science. I need to go to uh, Captain Crawford's office. Hi, Captain. Uh, and with that, he will energize. You guys are all going to go different places, but captains first, because captains are awesome. Uh, captains Yay. Are awesome. So, uh, Captain Bashir, uh, this is a much cleaner version of where you were once before. Uh, still standing sort of agog at just how things never seem to go right. Uh, with his dress uniform half done up, is Captain Crawford, who just seems at the moment to be sitting down, drinking something. Greetings, Captain. Captain. You wanted to speak with me? Yes. Um, well, long story short... Uh, we were sent 20-some years in the future. Uh, I read your little notepad in your desk on the left-hand drawer, and uh, the station was attacked by these people. Uh, the brain fart. Prof so did. So. Prof so. Prof so. Uh, and basically, as soon as you to finish your little speech, which was marvelous, by the way, um, they come up to do their version and set off a uh, bomb, basically killing all living life forms on the station. I see. And has your crew managed to come up with something to counteract this? Uh, we have high hopes that it'll work. Um, we haven't had a lot of time and no time to test it, but, uh, you should be, if not, Rami should be getting technical data <laughs> and my doctor and science officer are on board heading with the device created now. Rami materializes. That is correct, Captain. I have just integrated a Nadion, a contained Nadion pulse wave, which should prevent these this matter from dissolving, consuming, whatever. From converting organic matter into inorganic matter. I see. I have a set. It should work. There's a 75% chance that it will work. The calculations are very complex. Well, see if you can get those chances higher if you can. Yes, Captain. there's anything else we can do sir i'd be happy to help i do have a message that q would like you to meet his new daughter yeah you see his grip on the glass he's holding visibly tighten not enough to break it <sighs> Great. Got to deal with more damn Q. Lovely. There's Rami. Hi, Rami. We've missed you. Hey, everybody. Hi, Rami. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, the down in the science labs... Um, because I don't have any of the Cerberus support oh. care. Yep. And good job. Uh, and by the way, uh, Captain Crawford, we had the two delegates, and the uh, 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 Mud is with us too, finally. 
Well, good. All right. So, uh, down in the science labs, um, I don't have any of the support characters for Cerberus ported over, but just pretend that we're working with one or two of them, um, as Moore and Forliza. Uh, wh how do you you have this uh, tricorder rigged? What do you wish to do with it? Hmm. Good question. I think this is more of a sciencey thing than a medical thing. I'm not the smartest with this. So you're putting me in charge. <laughs> I mean, you're probably better suited for this type of task. Um. Probably. Although it's your research that's in it. Um, it's the protection force field, right? Protection force field. Uh, it's a uh, basically a communication damp, or it's a signal that will turn the programmable matter back into its just inert form. So we're in the science lab. Um, is it possible for us to take the information in that tricorder and upload it into the the ship so that all of the field emitters on the ship start emitting that signal? Ah, good question. Uh, roll me a control plus science, and the station will assist with computers plus science, and I will just roll the station. Reverse engineering. Computers <laughs> or sensor yeah. operation. Station gets a crit. Um, let's say... Hmm. You have computers, right? I have computers. I'll let that work. Awesome. So I also have technical expertise if I need a reroll. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be a difficulty of three. Uh, station's already critted, so you only need one success, really. Oh, well, wow. we're going to re-roll. Okay, <laughs> that's a good idea. <clears throat> There's the Yo. one success. Okay, uh, three successes later. Uh, the, stations, or the, uh, the station has changed or has modified Rami's hollow emitters to emit this pulse. So the station has 99% coverage, which is definitely enough to deal with this thing. So I hit my cap badge. Captain, the ship or the station is emitting the pulse to hope to disturb disturb the matter. Which captain are you speaking to? Yes. <laughs> Both. <laughs> They're in the same room. <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh, uh, loving it. And I think the conference room, the lower floor. Nope, I did that again. I did a mistake and buggered up the overlay. There we go. Commander Dalrum, you are busy overseeing all of the uh, final um, preparations for what should be a fantastic first contact. It's rare that a more advanced species willingly makes first contact with the Federation, let alone on peaceful terms. Uh, so the fact that everything has to be perfect is, well, it's kind of stressing you out. Uh, Deanna Troy is assisting you, of course. And as soon as I find your character token, that would be Doldrum. There you are. And Dorm is like running around making sure the last minute bits everything is prim and proper. The chairs are perfectly square. All the ribbons are. He, he's doing it being uh, finite details. Would Demos be there since he's security? Sure. That would make good sense. Uh, Demos, you're ensuring the uh, security is in order. You're aware that these indiv that this species, the Prots, so have demonstrated a ex uh, high level of technology. Uh, more so than any that you've encountered within the Lasai Expanse and any others by far. I feel like I'm a toy doll dressed up in his uniform. It's all white and fancy. Dalrum will come over and start, like, fixing it on the shoulders. Oh, you look fine. Uh, I am too big for this little uniform. But Taylor got my measurements wrong. 
Quite yeah. possibly. Uh, Deanna Troy's expression clouds as uh, Captain Crawford, Captain Bashir, are, as these two captains walk into the room, their expressions grim. Captains? Welcome back, Captain Bashir. Thank you, Commander. I wish it was on better terms. <laughs> Dolor will give... raise an eyebrow. I don't need to be a Beta Z to understand that something's wrong. Both of you are emanating dread like a, like Rami's hollow projectors do. Project light. What's wrong? Uh, Deanna. Uh, now is not the time. Um, is your husband around? He's in his office communicating with the Prosto. Okay, good. Um, it's like, can she... I can't remember how her, her abilities work. Can I basically... Like, tell her in my mind? Uh, no, she can only do telepathic... Feelings. Yeah, she can only do yeah. feelings unless you're, like, really emotionally close to her. And you're not. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely not. I just basically say Q's involved. You immediately see a big sigh, followed by a sarcastic laugh. <laughs> Let me guess. This is a terrible idea, and he's doing some game to ensure that we survive? Worse. Their <laughs> child. Don't tell me they've... He is correct. It's his daughter. Oh. Cap, I remember some... I remember something about that. Didn't they procreate on this station? I pray not. <laughs> Anyways, fine. Okay. Well, and then she looks at the captains. How do we proceed? Uh... I their ship out of the orbit <laughs> no i have them trying to uh my t my crew has come up with a possible solution uh i'm just having your husband try to stall for us while we get everything set up uh, rami reappears my sta uh, station emitters have been pre-programmed with two very two different uh, dampening techniques one which should prevent their matter from f um, converging and pro working as it should. The other to prevent us from being, well, prevent you from being eaten. I will be fine until my power runs out, of course. But I've grown rather fond of you. Trust me, you weren't that fine when we ran into the future. <laughs> but thank you, Rami. So, captains, All right. what do you guys want to do? Captains, your station. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm zoning out for a second because it's getting late, man. Yeah, sorry. I'll, uh, we're almost done. What? Yeah. Uh, so, basically, the options we're discussing are what again? Uh, well, A, blow them out of the sky. Uh, B, try to threaten them diplomatically somehow. Uh, C, prove to them that you can stop their bullshit technology. Or D, whatever the heck you decide to pull out of your butt at this point in time. Ah. Um, I kind of like the option of combining both options B and C. Okay. And how do you wish, to, how do you wish for that to go, Captain? Um, Rami, are you able to open communications with the... Prost, so. Yes, thank you. <laughs> of with course. With the Prost, ship from here? Of course, Captain. Hi Please do. Hijacking holographic array. And with that, uh, their ambassador slash political leader that you've been in contact with, uh, Sebrick Liss, 
um, she materialize, uh, she sort of builds herself holographically on the uh, platform so that surrounds the briefing table. Captain Crawford, it is so. Uh, you, so you notice that despite the fact that she doesn't have a mouth, uh, you and everyone in this room can hear what she says perfectly clearly. Is it in our minds? Yes, question? it is. Yes, it is. Lovely. Uh, Captain Crawford, uh, we find these delays that Admiral Riker has proposed to be most preposterous of our searching of Star of your uh, Starfleet procedure protocols for first contact we have not yet found any mention of a dance party or a rap battle well i'm afraid that neither of those will be happening so sabrak is that how it's pronounced Sa sabrak 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 huh. we know what you're planning and what is that captain you can, uh, in the, your, the mental sound of her voice doesn't change per se, but all of your subconsciousnesses pick up just something. It's like hearing a very low bass note on top of a chord. That's sort of what you're feeling inside your head. The clothing that you're wearing is programmable matter. We have, on good faith from other sources, that you're planning to use that to unleash a virus on the station. And we aren't going to let that happen. So either you can leave, and we can try to continue some diplomatic relations remotely, or... We have our own countermeasures for this. So if you try, we'll stop you. So either leave, or any diplomatic relations between you, Prosso, and the Federation will end now. Captain, even if you are correct in these wild assumptions, our technology is at least two, cent two of your centuries ahead uh, we f it's very difficult f for us to believe that you have developed any sort of feasible countermeasure and again if you want anything to continue we can do so remotely you're not coming on to the station captain we were attempting to play by your rules as long as possible but we don't need to wait for your permission and with that there's a small f space bends inwards and one uh, literally appears the male destron relator as you know him her bodyguard slash fellow diplomat appears demos is moving his hand behind his back just getting it ready mm, not surprising the holographic uh image of sabric lease looks over to and he his clothes begin to liquefy and fall off. Rami, activate countermeasure. Activate countermeasure. I'm firing Thunderlord. <laughs> so uh, with the uh, so with the liquid uh, as the liquid falls off in a golden waterfall style, uh, it immediately uh, there's a sound of a high pitched sound that causes uh, Captain Bashir, your antennae go into overdrive at the vibrations. Too fine for most people to pick up, but uh, you're going to have a <laughs> headache for the next little while. Um, the, the golden robes on Destrin's uh, fall off, and then they sort of solidify, trapping him in place before turning into dust. Uh, a sort of a powdery ash instead. Uh, drifts to the floor just in t now which one is Thunderlord? Oh, that's my machine gun. <laughs> just in time for uh, about six rounds of solid shot to perforate his body uh, leaving a uh, bluish purple fluid in its weight. 
uh, he lets out a gasp uh, through his nose, collapses. Uh, Sabric Lees lets out a loud shriek, uh, psionically, that uh, due to her nature, Deanna clutches her head and goes to her knees. The rest of you, you know, don't really care. Adora will grab uh, I, Deanna. Mm-hmm. I just turned to Sabrak with a smirk. You were saying. And she vanishes without a single parting shot or party witty repost. You know, the station needs, Captain. Mm. An Omega Particle Railgun. Oh, God. Thorin will cover uh, the or hit his comp badge. Station red alert, ray shields. We cut to the exterior of the station where Commander uh, Captain, or Captains, uh, Captain Bashir, uh, you receive an update through your comm badge at roughly the same time Crawford sees it from operations. Is there the Protso ship is powering up and heading back back towards the transwarp hub heading back to the gate from which it spawned. Good. <laughs> Without any no one ordering uh, you know firing at their um, exposed tailpipes. Uh, that is basically where I've ended the plot. So if you guys want to just you know BS amongst yourselves for a bit, I mean, I don't have any scenes I can think of. All right. Moore wants to go to the pet shop on the promenade. <laughs> on the boulevard. Uh, what sort of pet does Moore want to get? I'm thinking a hedgehog. Okay. They have several different colors. They come in uh, black, white, spotted, brown, purple, pink, uh, <laughs> biting. <laughs> you know, the genetic mo- the genetic modification of, you know, sentient species is prohibitively banned by Federation law. However, genetic modification of animals still seems to be proceeding apace. So, you know. <laughs> I'm going to do... Pre- traditionally brown but i'll pick the one that has a little bit of black in his face of course question how is uh, real-time communication from here to earth um through the midas array it's not instantaneous but you know an hour or so delay okay Unless, yeah um moose is just in his quarters after opening up the wound again in engineering mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like i'm just gonna sit back and <laughs> take it easy <laughs> All right. He's uh, grading papers for. Uh, he actually is a teacher on his off time uh, for the students of the ship. <laughs> Somehow I think that they'd like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He gives the best field trips. Actually, I do. I do have one quick thing because okay. I did make a new supporting character, so I want to do a quick uh, thing with the uh, Captain Bashir about a new uh officer they'll be receiving Uh oh and which one's that um that would be they're under the security section but they're a science officer that would be ensign beckett boimler oh god no okay (laughs) is it the same that doesn't sound right um okay uh, Beckett Boimler is a female, apparently. Okay, I'm assuming this might be some relation at some point. We will figure that out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Captain, you're on the bridge. Uh, sometime after this is all passed, uh, you are in the captain's ready room. And there's a chime at your door. Hello, Captain. Oh, sorry. I said I'm in my ready room polishing my plunger. Ah. Enter! (laughs) Uh, Newly transferred crewman Ensign Boimler. uh, uh, Recently transferred on via the station from wherever her previous posting was. Ensign, welcome aboard. I haven't received your papers yet. Uh, They should be on their way, Captain. So tell me about your oh, yourself. Oh, your uh, your headset's 
glitching something fierce there, uh, Captain. Ah! Okay. The reprogrammed matter got to him. <laughs> no! <laughs> Death is fatal. <laughs> uh. Edson, so tell me about yourself. Well, um, fresh out of the academy, sir. Uh, I believe that the Concordia will be my first posting. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what she's got. Oh, interesting. Anything else? Uh, she... um... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, she appears to be as awkward as her father. I'm assuming that's a... Or a possibly crazy uncle. Not entirely sure which yet. Do you know um of a... At this point, they'd probably be, what, a lieutenant commander? Probably? Here's hoping. <laughs> Who knows how this story plays out, but let's go with that. Yeah. And do you know about a lieutenant commander Brad Boimler? I remember him serving on the Titan. Yes, he doesn't stop talking about it. I'm sure Riker remembers him. Whether or not it's fondly is I still don't know. I'll see what I can find out for you before you meet the Admiral. <laughs> of course. Good luck, Ensign. I'm always here for my crew. Thank you, Captain. Dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> and Benson Boimler will get up and walk out. Yay, ties to existing canon characters. Love it. Anyways, uh, so that's uh, from yeah. Spencer. Uh, Gate Jumper, anything you want to do here or on the station? Uh, no, uh, not really. I'm good. I uh, have fun with Zax if I can. Oh, that sounds like fun. Where would you like this to be? In my quarters. Oh, okay. Um, I'm assuming this is Moose? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Okay, Moose Quarter. Now he's in trouble with security already on the station. <laughs> uh, let's get these people out of here. Uh, right, Moose, you are busy um, in your quarters grading papers. Uh, little Jimmy is doing very well on his math. That's good. And the court, then it chimes, and it's probably who, you, given the amount of swearing you're hearing through the door, yeah, it's probably him. <laughs> Come on in, Zax. Ah, uh, what can I do it for you? Uh, I like engineering, but there's something missing, and I think you can help me with it. Back in the old days, we had something called an engineer's mate. It was basically, if I wasn't around, you'd be in charge. You were responsible for a bunch of little different tasks, mate and stuff like that. Basically, the term came in as of now, is known as operations manager. But I still want that right-hand individual. And despite your colorful vocabulary, I think you'd be good for it. Appreciate it. Uh, I can do it my best. And there know. is an introduction, though, to it. Go on. And Moose is just going to let out a whistle. And uh, he's like, he just came out of stasis not too long ago, so he's a little groggy. And uh, <laughs> you hear heavy thumping, multiple feet hitting the ground, and as you turn around, you see a snow slug. It's um, big, six limbs, its mouth split opens into three parts, and tentacles come out, and it just starts drooling all over you. I'm like, that's Gertie. Hi, Gertie. Sure. <laughs> It's moss just close over your head for a second just, and then it pulls back. You're just uh, soaked. <laughs> the beard is dripping. <laughs> Better than on fire. Right. <laughs> like, that's Gertie. He's, um... Oh, he was a hurt little pup when I found him. And he likes you, so I think it's official. I ain't gonna change his letter, do I? 
<laughs> Wear it with pride. <laughs> Show everyone that Gertie likes you. <laughs> uh, okay. I bl- uh, Spencer. Nope, we just did that. Uh, Scotty, anything for you, station or ship? Nope. Nope. All right. Oh, so, uh, I hope you guys had an enjoyable Halloween episode. I am sad no one died, but, you know, one of these Don't days... Don't get out of here. Yeah. One of these <laughs> days... I'm <laughs> close. Yeah, one of these days... Yeah, get they come close. Uh, anyways, thank you all for watching, thank you all for playing, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye-bye.